Jessica Paul to talk about with you. We'll start with last night's action. Last night, Sixers in Utah to face the Jazz, and that guy, Joel Embiid, back from suspension after his fight with Carl Anthony Towns, dominant in his return. Two of his 27 right there, including 16 of 18 from the line. 16 boards as well. Bad news for the Sixers, though. Ben Simmons suffered a sprained AC joint in his right shoulder. He'll be reevaluated later today. Donovan Mitchell and the Jazz, unstoppable. 106 104. Vincent, what do you think? What do the Sixers need to do if they want to get over the hump this season and be that team out of the East? I take umbrage with you saying Joel and B was suspended for fighting because that wasn't a fight. What was that? <laughs> that was like a pillow fight. That was a pillow fight? <laughs> I don't okay. know what that was. It was well, I wouldn't want to fight with you then. No, no, no. no. I'm, I'm from Detroit where basketball players used to really fight back in the yeah. day. Gotcha. I knew so, where that was going. But um, I don't know if they have the right personnel to be able to make a legitimate finals run. Not from a defensive standpoint, because I think right now they're, they're sixth in efficiency. They have length across the board, Al Horford, Joel Embiid, nobody's gonna be able to score them. And at sixth in efficiency, you almost feel like they're underachieving a bit defensively. Absolutely. Like this should be a top three defense, well, and it I, will be. It, it, I think it will be. Yep. But when it comes down to playoff basketball, you have to be able to have a guy that can create his own offense outside of the structure of the offense. Last year, they had Jimmy Butler to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And had Kawhi Leonard not made that incredible shot from the baseline, who knows what would have happened on the rest of that, in the rest of that game and the rest of that run. But Jimmy Butler isn't there anymore, and who knows what you're going to get out of a guy like Tobias Harris, who can create his own shot, but do you trust him late in games? Do you trust Joel Embiid to run your offense through him late in games? Ben Simmons, we know, can't shoot, won't shoot, and that has not improved. <laughs> so where, do you, where, do, where are they going to find offense? I'm not sure unless they make personnel changes, but they've committed $500 million in, in the personnel that they have this past offseason. It, it is a totally fair concern, and it's not going to be Ben. Like the AC joint injury, regardless. It, it, uh, and I hate to be at this place with him, but he refuses to evolve his game. Mm. No matter how many videos we see of the fact that he doesn't have that ugly of a shot. Like it's the hell. Giannis's shot is ugly. Like his three-point <laughs> shot. It, there's a hitch to it. It takes forever to get, get going. But he will shoot it. And even though he's, I mean, he can't be shooting 18 percent as he was going into last night's game. Mm -hmm. But he will at least attempt it. So you can't just stay off 10, 15 feet from him. Ben won't shoot it outside of, forget 18 feet, outside of eight feet. And so that has been the issue with them, the question with them. And we had Tobias Harris on this show after he got the huge contract. And I can't remember if it was on the air or off the air, but I, I asked him, I said, hey, into games, the exact situation you're talking about, that's gotta be you, right? And he said, absolutely. Can he do it? Tobias Harris is an awesome player that a bunch of teams have said we don't need. Like a, Tobias Harris on the Magic, was on the Clippers, on the Six. He, and I, I like Tobias as a player, but when he gets paid the way he got paid, mm -hmm. when he slides into that spot that in place of Jimmy Butler, it has to be him. Because it can't be one of your big men. Can't be Horford or Embiid. It, it's obviously not going to be Josh Richardson. Richardson yeah. If it is, then you're in bad shape. Like, and, and the guys they got, they, they don't have that much depth because they have allocated so much resources to the front court. I like the rookie they got, Thibel. Yeah. But he's a one-way player. He's a spectacular defensive player, even as a rookie. But he's got no offense whatsoever. So the only guy he can be is Tobias Harris. And if, if there's only one option, and the whole league knows it, and it's an option that that's probably not really what he's best suited for, it is a legitimate concern. I still think they're the second best team in the East. I believe in them more than I believe in Boston. I know some people are higher on Boston than I am this year. Boston's a nice story. They're not as good as Philly. But how do you get through Milwaukee if you don't have that guy? I don't know if you can. And I think last night's game proves Vince's point because you're talking about a four-point game until Donovan Mitchell takes over, and he's the catalyst for that team going on that 12-2 run in the second half, which really created that separation. So, yeah, the Sixers are going to have to find somebody that can get them a bucket in clutch time. I don't think it can be Joel Embiid. You haven't seen historically a lot of big men in NBA history be that guy in that, that cr critical moment late in the game to take that shot. Uh, it's not Ben Simmons. He's shown us that he's not going to be that guy. So you're, you're banking on Tobias Harris. I, I don't know if he's got that element to his game. They're going to have to find that part of it. They're going to have to get somebody to give them that identity late in games that can take over, that can get them a bucket, especially once we're talking about postseason basketball, because, you know, the intensity ratches up, mm -hmm. the defense is a lot better. So 
Who's going to be that guy for the Sixers? We just don't know. I, I think that defense is going to give them a chance. Mm -hmm. Defense will keep the games close. But you're going to have to have somebody that can create their own offense without Brett Brown drawing something up on the sideline. Well, I don't even know if Brett Brown is capable of drawing something up from the sideline. Uh, I'm not saying that he's not a good, a good enough coach, but when you get to the, where the margins are thin, is he going to be that much of an advantage over Mike Budenholzer? Over an Eric Spolster in Miami, over a Brad Stevens. Like the East is a little bit different this year at the top than it was last year, where we know Miami has a guy in Jimmy Butler in a seven game series who's going to go out and get his own. Boston has a few guys that, let's say Jason Tatum has taken his next step. Let's say Gordon Hayward is fully recovered. Let's say Kimball Walker is Kimball Walker. You have three guys. Now, Joel Embiid is supposed to be that guy. If, you're, if he's the franchise, he's supposed to be this 30-point MVP candidate, which I believe he is, he doesn't have a defined or refined like post game. Two moves in the counter. He doesn't have that. He and you can't right. run a, and you can't run an offense out of your big when he's so mechanical and you can sort of you can easily easily get to help. Take the ball away from him or at least force him into doing things that he doesn't want to do. And clearly nobody else is equipped to be that secondary primary Right, option. listen, Embiid, and when Embiid's on the court, they're outscoring opponents by 17 points per 100 possessions. He's been sensational, which is one of the reasons why, by the way, we all laughed about it, call it a fight, call it not. You can't be getting suspended, Joel Embiid. You can't get into that because the three games since the suspension, they won the first one barely, thanks to Cork Maz hitting that three at the buzzer. They lost the next one, and then with his first game back, even though he, he sat, you're like, oh, he had 27 and 16. Yeah, but he was five of six from the field. He was making his money at the free throw line. They needed Joel Embiid not knocking some rust off last night. Maybe they win that game. What Embiid needs to do is pay the 50 grand or whatever Akeem's charging these days to go down to Houston for a long weekend and work on some post work, work on some back to the basket work. But I don't know who that guy is for Philly and it doesn't have to be a great player. What you're talking about is they need a Lou Williams. Yep. They need a hell. It, Jamal Crawford, maybe not at this age, but mm -hmm. a guy like that, that even if he is not your one or two option, a guy that can just break people down. What they need is the guy Donovan Mitchell's turning into. And they don't have, that is the gaping hole in their roster. And it's going to, I agree with you. I think they're going to win 57 games. I think they're going to be in the Eastern Conference Finals. I don't know if they want to get there. It, there. You can't name a team in the past millennium, in this millennium of e either side that got, that's gotten to the finals without a guy that can get his own shot. In the Eastern Conference, we may make fun of it and everything else, but these other teams are better equipped, even if they aren't better teams, better rosters up and down. But when you're talking about playoff basketball, you can get one guy that can steal you a game. Mm -hmm. That's the difference in you oh, winning 4-2 and sure. losing, you know, 4-3. Four, four, you stick around? If you guys want me to, sure. Of course. <laughs> uh, we'll see you a little bit later, Vincent. Coming up, are the Chiefs making a big mistake if they start Patty Mahomes on Sunday? That's next on First Things First. He's got to take the next segment off for load.